Hello there everybody, my name is Coach Shadlogster1, Bot Built for Theme Park News, and welcome to my trip review from the York Dungeon. Now, before we get started, I just want to um, put my my heart and my thoughts and prayers to the family of Caroline Flack. Um, if you didn't see the news, she unfortunately passed away uh, yesterday at the age of 40. Um, now, there's going to be people out there saying, speak about social media because it's a disgrace, and the modern media because it's a disgrace. I'm not going to say anything about the media, because other people put it better than I ever could. And if I start going about the media, I will start, I will start being more emotional. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to lose over something that's probably not going to change, because the laws on media are unforgivable uh, so I'm not gonna uh, speak much more about it because I will just lose it but all I can say is my thoughts and prayers go out to the family of Caroline Flack and the friends of Caroline Flack because I know how deeply deeply sorrow they're feeling um, special mention to Stephanie Davis uh, who plays Sinead in Hollyoaks just watched her Instagram video about 10 minutes so much heart and passion. Like I said, people speak it better than I could ever could. So I just wanted to put the word out there. So rest in peace, Caroline Flack. She was one in a million. I never got the chance to meet her, but she was an absolute diamond of a human being. And she'll be missed. She'll be missed by everyone. Um, so before so before we go any further, make sure you like the video if you've loved it. Comment down below your thoughts. Subscribe and click notification bell so you never miss a YouTube video. Please share the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. And also make sure... Um, you put your questions in for the Q&A session. Use hashtag question before or after your question. Um, and for now, guys, let's get into this video. So this is a trip review. Uh, we uploaded the vlog yesterday. The exclusive interview with Ben, the marketing manager, will be going out in a separate video as well, so make sure you stay tuned for that. But this is the trip review uh, from the York Dungeon from yesterday. Um, so overall, this video, I'm just going to be speaking about uh, the overall experience, uh, what I thought uh, to each scene and how it improved from last time and also speak about the brand new War of the Roses and then quickly recapping what we spoke about in the interview which is on the vlog and will be in the separate video later on today. So let's start off then with the beginning, the Fear of the Vikings. This is the introduction in the pre-show waiting area uh, when the character appears out of the darkness uh, and brings us in uh, to that first section. So... Um, great acting quality, I've got to say that first of all, great acting quality throughout the whole experience for all the different shows, brilliant, brilliant acting. Um, and yeah, the pre-show waiting area was good, it was nice to sort of wait around that. Um, my, ca my camera person, uh, obviously you'll have seen in the vlog that we used like a, uh, we had a camera person on there. Um, you know, it, it, he got picked uh, for the Vikings uh, as uh, Evic. <laughs> That's the name they use in the script, Evic. Um, so it's a true Saxon name, apparently. Uh, so they sort of get him to try and lift a chest, and then sort of get him to sit in like like a chair of shame. They pick someone else. Uh, they lift the chest. They become Hilda Evic, uh, code name. Pulls the rope. Um, Wrong rope, Vikings attack the church, doors shut, they try and keep, the actor tries to keep, or well, the actress uh, this time tries to keep them out, uh, and then Hilda, and sort of Evic leads the way, Hilda gets put into a pit of vipers by the Vikings in the next scene. So that was Fear the Vikings, then we go into Vengeance of the Vikings. Now, this is where one of the first major changes happened. So, Vengeance of the Vikings had a big change, and that, my friends, is... The if you've been in the experience before this, you'll know there was like a grid on the floor with some projections on the grid. Uh, now that, like I told you in the vlog, has been removed. Now this has been replaced by a nice warm carpet, which was really cool on my feet. Uh, <laughs> I just got to put the word out there for that. Um, so yeah, it was the same story as the usual routine. You know, someone's in the barrel of vipers, uh, but we haven't got the vipers under our feet anymore. Uh, but what they have done, like I spoke about in the vlog, is they've actually increased the drop on the floor to make it you know, bigger and better. Uh, so they said, uh, well to be fair, Ben said to me, the marketing manager said to me that the, the grid with the vibe projections looked a little bit naff. Uh, so 
you know, replace it with this carpet, increase the drop, make it look better. And I think that's a good move. I think I agree with that. It's a good move. The Viper Pit was good with the projections, but I feel like having a carpet and just increasing the drop is a very good move indeed. Uh, now, uh, as usual with the Vengeance of the Vikings, the second scene, you know, it's the same story. Um, you know, and I feel like, you know, that's the... It, it was just the usual script, really. Uh, a couple of changes to sort of suit with the with no Viper grid and things like that. But, you know, it was the same story after that, pretty much. Um, so then we went through. Uh, and we went into the Plague Doctor. The Plague Doctor. Time to pull out some bits. Uh, <laughs> um, that was a, a really cool scene. I'm not going to lie, that was really cool. Um... The Plague Doctor, uh, actress, I've got to say, brilliant acting quality. All, all the acting quality, like I said, throughout the entire experience was very, very good. If I had to pick one where it was just a little bit better than the others, it's got to be the Plague Doctor actress. She was fantastic. So good. So, so good. No real changes in there, really. Just the same stuff, the same scenery, the same sort of order of scenes with this. Uh, so... You know, it was it was the usual story with this one. Um, you know, it was the the leeches on the bench and uh, you know different things like that. So you know, it was again, like I said, it was the usual story with this one. Um, and then you sort of made your way out of the plague doctor and you made your way into the golden fleece inn. And this was where the major change happened. And this was the introduction of the War of the Roses story. Uh, so, like I said in the uh, the vlog. It is a seasonal show, uh, and th basically this is um, a story about these uh, this battlefield, like this whole Tonton Hall pub is like a battlefield kind of thing. Uh, so, you know, it was sort of um, like soldiers buried alive underneath the floorboards, and then it sort of, kept, like I said in the vlog, it kept the same kind of script, but just adapted with the War of the Roses story. Uh, so it still had the same sort of code names like C, V, and Hell. Uh, so I thought that was a very nice fit uh, for the story. Uh, now, you know, it still had the same ghostly projection saying C, V, and Hell. And then, of course, the jet stream through the curtains uh, was, again, same as, uh, same as usual. So it was just an adapted story. So it is a seasonal show. It's running for a couple of weeks. It ends on February 29th. Uh, so make sure you get down to your dungeon before February 29th. Um, and then we went through into Margaret Clithrow. This is the uh, new one for a couple of years ago now. Uh, so you get held up in this like little pre-show section where Margaret explains to you what's happening. Uh, and then the police start knocking on the door and then you have to go through this mirror maze. You get kept in the mirror maze bit while they sort of search the, the home and they get Margaret. And they sort of... It's afterwards it sort of leads you out of the mirror maze into like the, into the next section. Uh, so, you know, very, very nice indeed. Uh, and then we came to the talking heads. The talking heads were fantastic as always. Uh, now, we spoke about in the interview, and you'll, you'll see in it on the vlog, we spoke about how the new show in May could be something to do with Guy Fawkes. Now, I sort of put the question out there, could it be replacing the talking heads? you know, no comment, you know, they didn't give me an a sort of definitive answer of whether it is a replacing the talking heads, but they did say they wanted to try and expand on that, because Guy Fawkes was, such a, was born in York, and obviously, you know, it was sort of that whole history behind Guy Fawkes, uh, they want to expand on, so it looks like Guy Fawkes will be the theme for the new show in May, uh, I have heard some things about the new show, uh, not everything, just little, like, couple of little details here and there, which I can't really share, uh, but you'll have seen it in the interview. Uh, so uh, make sure you go and watch that in the vlog and also the separate video will be released as well but basically yeah the talking heads no change there brilliant as always good projections good comic script uh, just brilliant as always then we made our way through to the clever and not so clever torturer I think that was the word not too sure they sort of played it about between the two characters but they did describe the torturer and let us go and you know like I said the talking heads the script is still the same Torturer, still the same again, um, but it was really good. The actress was fantastic in there, uh, as always, but yeah, it was just the same scene again. The courtroom. Now, I was picked. <laughs> I was picked for the very first. 
and you, got, you know me guys, I'm an actor. So I decided to play along uh, with this whole courtroom setting. I decided to make a character for myself. Uh, so I put on a slightly uh, more uh, camp voice and I decided to play along as a character. Uh, and the courtroom actor, uh, he, he kept character, bless him, he kept character. Um, but the audience could see that I was, I was trying, to, uh, trying to throw him off. <laughs> um, but the courtroom scene went well, loads of jokes in there. Um, you know, I was blamed for um, wearing a wig and wearing a dress and dancing about and frolicking and things like that. Um, you know, and he said he wants his money back. So I said, uh, as I was walking out, I said, I'll get you your money back, George. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was just fantastic. Um, so we made our way out of the courtroom uh, and we made our way through to the witch. Yes, this was brand new for last year. The curse of the witch. The witch. Isabella Bellington. Uh, the witch. Um, again, no real changes from that, really. I think there was a little less strobe effects than there was that I remember. But I think that is because now I've done the uh, the witch of Burslem Cottage scene at the end of the Alton Towers dungeon, I sort of... I, I was expecting a bit more strobes like there was in that. So I think I was like undermining expectations with that one but it was a great show anyway uh, no real changes just a little less strobe effects than I remember but overall it was still good it was worth it uh, and then we went our way into the last scene the Dick Turpin Highwayman scene now of course those of you who are long term diehard fans of the dungeon will remember the original way they did the Highwayman scene and the, the Dick Turpin stuff um, where he sort of sat on the benches in a room and sort of talk about the hanging and then blood splattered and the benches tilted a bit. This was, of course, invented a few years ago and this was the carriage simulator. Uh, so this was all about uh, riding in the carriage, you get stopped, the door's locked, Dick Turpin wants to steal your jewels, uh, we stay in the carriage, keep your hands on your jewels, uh, and basically, yeah, he sort of try and breaks his way in and the seats tilt at the end and then you get let out into... Uh, the photo collection point uh, where you did the pre-show where you did like photos and things like that uh, they've got your photos in the witch scene as well so that was a nice addition I couldn't remember that last year but I know now that they can get you photos they secretly take your photos during the strobe effect stuff in the witch so that's something to point out uh, I was very shocked <laughs> didn't get any photos unfortunately but uh, I did look like a shocked uh, like a scared turtle, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and of course, it made our way into the dungeon shot where I did the interview with Ben. So that was my whole experience. Um, overall, out of 10, I'm going to give that a 9. I think that was fantastic. It was just as good as Curse of the Witch opening day last year. Obviously, we're going to be at your dungeon a couple of times throughout this year now. Obviously, for the new show in May, for the launch of the new show in May, and of course, they're doing something brand new in October to sort of take a different route through Halloween. So, very excited for that, and I'd love to do that as well. So, May and October, look out for those two months uh, when dates get revealed for these launches when I'll be at York Dungeon. So, if you're at York Dungeon in May or October or both, look out for the dates of these new shows because you could see me there. Uh, so, thank you very much for watching this trip review. Uh, from the York Dungeon. Like I said, I'm really excited about the York Dungeon's future and I can't wait to see what they're going to invent next. Thank you very much. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell to see another future video. Keep on the coast life, and I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have a nice day.